again, everybody. The History Guy here. It is great to be back with you. Uh, after a little bit of a hiatus, I uploaded some videos this week that I shot a week ago before I left for my trip to Amarillo, Texas and uh, to southern Indiana. But I'm home for a few days before I head off to Winnemucca, Nevada, which is right up near the border with Oregon. That's where I'll be spending six nights next week. And I uh, will be taking my computer with me so I can get caught up on making some videos. Hopefully I'll have some good internet where I can upload those things. I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to Chris Marciniak, who's one of my supporters of this page, one of the sponsors of this page. Chris, thank you so much for all of your support. And uh, like I said with William the other day, it has been great to get to know you a little bit through YouTube. And I look forward to getting to know all of you further. Uh, if you are interested in being a part of sponsoring me on patreon you can check out that link below uh, i am looking for some ideas for some new incentives to give to folks who choose to sponsor uh, i want to kind of keep that fresh and give some new things out there so if you give a, have any suggestions about that please use the comment section below or you can shoot me a message and i'll read that when i get a chance but we're going to go ahead and dive into the battle of nansamond river uh, there has been an update to the game we're now on version 1.06 I will uh, put the description below of the changes that are made. Uh, mainly some new custom battles. And they also made a few more changes to the AI, uh, particularly when it comes to the scaling. Uh, so it sounds like some of the battles uh, have been made to be more competitive moving forward in the campaign. Uh, they've kind of nerfed the... Uh, advantages you get to just wiping out the enemy in previous battles. So uh, we'll see how that affects things moving forward. Obviously, I haven't played through the entire campaign uh, since they released the full version of the game uh, and, and kind of made some of those changes. So uh, I guess we'll see how this goes. But I have 14 brigades ready for the assault at Nansamon River. Uh, this is kind of an interesting battle because he's got a very heavy fortification. And sometimes the... The temptation is to go right at it because when you start out, you can see I've got 29,000 men, 72 guns. He's got 18,000 men, 88 guns. So the temptation here is to jump right at it because you're given an hour at the beginning. And so it makes you feel like, okay, I've got to hurry up and take the fort because I've only got an hour. But if you read in the instructions, it talks about how you get some gunboats to help out. So once this hour's over, then the gunboats show up and they start shelling the fort. And that's really the time to make the assault so really this first hour for me is just about getting my troops into position where i want them and what i'm going to do is i'm going to come under some artillery fire here from the fort but i'm not going to worry about that too much i'm going to get my assault troops into position i'm basically going to do the uh kind of the sledgehammer tactic here where i'm just going to line up a bunch of brigades in a row and just punch them right into that line now, I do want to put some troops over here on this side, and the reason why is because he has a lot of troops, and they're kind of spread out. If I send everybody over this way, then he's going to send everybody over that way too, and then I get into kind of a mess because he's got those fortifications. So like I said, I'm just going to use this first part just to kind of get everybody into position where I want them. And then I'll launch the assault. Alright, I'm going to let some of these guys clear out here. Uh, let's see, let's send these guys up. Over here. Because I think there's some skirmishers up here. We can kind of clear them out. Yeah, here comes the artillery fire, and as you can see, that lead brigade's already lost 12 men, so they're going to take some casualties. Getting into position. Just have my general over to this side, too. Alright, we'll go ahead and kind of speed this first part up. I'm going to at least try to get these guys into the cover of the trees so maybe they won't take quite as many uh, casualties here. Alright, 
so there's not much going on down here so I'm gonna go ahead and bring these guys up this way a little bit move these guys up these guys are gonna follow these assault brigades right up into the fort at least that's the plan all right I don't see any uh, skirmishers I'm actually kind of surprised I expected there would be skirmishers up in these woods so these guys are gonna be sitting right here and once the assault happens on the fort then I'll do my best to try and hit these guys but Right now, it looks like the artillery is doing a decent job. So the artillery I brought, just because I was attacking forts, I've got these 24-pounders, i got a 10-pounder, and then I've got my 20-pounders with John Brown's Barkers. So a lot, a lot of casualties happening right now because of artillery. These guys have lost 150 men already. All right, here we go. Phase two, we're gonna get the, the gunboats. Our ironclads are here, they start to fire at the batteries. Now is the time to charge, and now we can see everybody he's got sitting in there. I'm gonna try to come from this side first. I'm hoping maybe I can draw some of these guys off. Plus that gives my ironclads a chance to fire a little bit. Okay, he's got another brigade over there. I've got three hours now, so plenty of time. I'm not in a big rush to go after this fort. See, he's already sending his cavalry out now. That's kind of what I was hoping for. I'm going to draw as much of his fire over this way as I can before I launch the assault on the fort. soften these guys up a little bit more if I can All right, I'm gonna wait till probably about two hours to go and that's when I'll launch the the main assault on the fort fortifications itself uh, he's got 16,000 men left I can gang up on a couple of these brigades here early. Let's see how the casualties are going here. Um, I've lost 400 men. He's lost 700, so not a lot so far on either side. And almost all of mine have been as a result of artillery. I want to take this battery out if I can. Although it means I'm going to get kind of sucked into his line, so maybe I shouldn't. All right, hold up, guys, hold up. I don't want to get pulled in a melee combat into three brigades over here. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this just because these guys are starting to fall back toward the fort and I don't want to get myself in a situation where I end up having to run into those guys in the fortifications. Drop these guys back a little bit. Run. No, don't stop and shoot. Run.
Obviously, the Lee Brigade's going to suffer the most. They've already taken a lot of casualties from the artillery. And now they're going to take even more. Maybe I should have sent the One Star Brigade up first. Once I push through and overrun these guys, it'll it'll ease up a lot. Benning out of there. Now I gotta get out these batteries. And I've got him cornered up here. There's not really anywhere he can go. So this might be one of those chances to kind of inflict annihilation eventually. So let's bring the guns up. Let's get this other brigade back up there. My general should have been there the whole time. Where are my supplies? Oh, they're back here. Don't really need them. high casualty um, minor battles. Part of me wonders whether it might not have been better to do the other the other battle first uh, because either one of these battles you uh, win you give a 25% manpower penalty to the enemy. So I could have reduced his numbers in this fight by 25% if I'd done the other one first. Okay, we've got them all pretty well driven off now. Need Bayard to back off. Now we're going to get him cornered. We'll let the ironclads do part of the hard work now. Let everybody recover. Hold up, guys. Hold up. give everybody a chance to recover before I move forward here because I have to destroy these batteries in order to win the battle Deering and Stribling just want to get my condition back up these guys are good Trying to find the best conditioned unit I have. I 
after John Brown's Barker's fire, I'm going to move them up a little closer. Eh, you know what? Maybe I won't. I'm going to move these guys up there. These are the guys I need to get, though, in the next hour and a half. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to go through everybody else. Let's see where his numbers are. He's at 11,500. I've taken out most of his guns, but not all of them. I've lost 3,600 men. He's lost at least 4,000, maybe more, depending on what units may have disintegrated. All right. We've got some units that are refreshed and ready to go. Okay, here we go. Gonna have to go through everybody to get to the to get to the men I have to destroy. Got him by about, let's see, 13,000 men. I'm gonna hopefully start seeing some units surrender here. Like Kemper, if he can get stuck behind my lines. Benning looks like the most likely target right now for surrender. A couple of my units are going to get stuck on their other side. Okay, I had him by 13,000 when that assault began. I've got him by 14,000 now. So it's working. There's Banning. Okay, I figured he might surrender. Perfect. There's a thousand men off the board. Still, I gotta get through all these guys to get to these ones over here. Okay, I've got him by 15,000 men now. This is a mess, but it's what I have to do. Go and speed things up a little bit. All right, Hayes surrender, perfect. No, not you. Anderson's gonna be next, I think. What an absolute mess. Yeah, some of these guys might just dissolve before they surrender at this point. Got plenty of time left. I should be able to get through all these guys. Okay, now I've got a 16,000 man advantage. My casualties are going to be high, but I've got plenty of manpower. Kind of the Grant strategy here. Um, you know, let's make it a complete bloodbath because I can replace the losses and he can't. At least, at least not as well. And the other one looks like he dissolved. And apparently I destroyed the other guys and it immediately ended the battle. So there we have it. What a mess. 
5,000 casualties for me. Uh, by the time you count everything up, he's over uh, 10,000. Looks like he's closer to 12, over 12,000. So still better than 2 to 1 odds. I'll certainly take that. Uh, I wish I would have grabbed more guns than this. Uh, you would think considering how that battle went, that would have been the case. But I guess not. Uh, one promotion, no losses among my officers. So that's good news. Uh, let's just take a look real quick at some of the losses. Uh, John Brown's Barker's a nice day. 334 kills, no losses. Obviously firing on fortifications, and that kind of affected things a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at where things stand going forward. we still got several battles to fight before we get to Chancellorsville. Uh, I'm going to continue to go into medicine right now. Kind of bring back some of those losses without having to worry about spending on experience, etc., uh, so here's where things stand. He just got a bunch more recruits. So he's still at 85 to 90,000. But we're going to keep reducing that down before we get to Chancellorsville. So right now, where things stand, let's see what Suffolk's going to look like. So this time I'm on the defensive with 18 brigades. So, yeah, you know, I'm kind of really thinking like maybe the way to go was to fight this one first. But. Hey, uh, you live, you learn. So obviously I'm going to refit these guys and get them ready. I can get a few additional brigades, but I'm obviously going to greatly outnumber him and this time on the defensive. So that should actually go really well for me. Let's go ahead and just kind of take a look at where we're going to go with that. I get four more brigades. And this time, because I'm going to be on the defensive, I definitely want to take in some smooth bores. So we'll drop a few into the second core. What's that get me to 15 brigades? Those are six pounders, and so not ideal. When when you're dealing with a minimum number of units, you want to take the most effective ones possible. All right, let's see how these six pounders have done in previous. Actually, they've done really well. I mean, look at Malvern Hill, 1,300 kills. So, all right, we'll give you a chance here, six pounders. Let's see what you can do. All right, so that gives me 17 brigades. What did it say? 18 I can take, so I can take one more still. Uh, I'm, I'm taking lots of artillery into this fight, just thinking that that's a nice way uh, to level them up to get some defensive advantages going. I'm going to get the Hampton Legion in there. Uh, Paper Caller, I'm going to... Yeah, I should probably go ahead and bring them in as well. since I'm not assaulting this time. See, I'm starting to get some major generals in charge of brigades now, so I'm going to go ahead and make a little switch here. That way I've got all major generals in charge of my divisions. Is there another one in a... Yeah, right here. Okay. So that gives me 19 brigades. i got to drop somebody out. drop one of my assault brigades out. In fact, I'm going to drop all the assault brigades out. O'Hare, let's get you in there. That's 18, but I really don't want to waste all my major generals on brigade command. I'm going to save them for when I get to Chancellorsville and I'm going to need some more major generals in charge of some things. Alright, let's start jacking these guys up now. What kind of weapons we have available? Some more 1861s, but that'll drop me down pretty low on morale. And I think I got enough money for now, but at some point I'll visit the armory to see what I can sell. This is going to be a little pricey, I think. Yeah, a little more pricey than I want to go. So I'm going to go some some rookies here. It's going to drop the numbers down a little bit, but it's going to be more cost effective. He's good there. A couple of these guys are about to hit two-star status. Let's swap out these guns if we can.
Got some Enfields. That's going to give me some better firing efficiency. So we'll go that route. Lots of Enfields available. Almost out of money, but that's okay. Like I said, I got some stuff I can sell. So I'm not too worried about that. The Alfred Pleasanton leading an infantry brigade. Interesting. A cavalry commander. At least that's how he's usually known. Um, Alright, for now... I'm just going to take some money out of supply. I'm going to put it back before the battle chance is built, but I do not need it here right now. Like I said, there's lots of other ways I can make up that money. Alright. Swap these guys out so I get the, the smooth boards up in here just in case I don't get all of them at once. Sir, yes, sir. Hampton Legion, there we go. I want to make sure all my uh, all my uh, patrons units are in this one. O'Hare, yes. John Browns, yes. There's Hampton Legion, paper collar, perfect. Alright, we're just going to swap paper collar up into there though. Gonna go up to 2,000 on Grider because he's got the 1861s. Okay, um, I think we're good. All right, so we've got 18 brigades. Let's see what that's gonna look like for the siege of Suffolk in terms of the numbers. All right, so we're looking at. 38,000 against his force of 23,000. Going to be a piece of cake, I think, defending that one. So we'll come back with that next battle. And uh, like I said, in hindsight, maybe that's something you want to consider when you're doing your own campaign is maybe do Suffolk first because it's, de it's a defensive battle. Uh, probably do better in terms of the casualty numbers, and then you can reduce what he has available to him uh, in the offensive battle when you're attacking fortifications, he'll have 25% fewer troops available to him in that one. So that's probably the way to go. Um, lesson learned. I didn't really pay much attention to that before. So kind of those are the little details you want to kind of keep an eye out for when you're thinking through the campaign. Uh, as always, I welcome your input, your comments, your questions. What would you have done differently in that attack at Nansamon River? I know it probably could have gone better because I hate having lost 5,000 men. But as you can see, I'm not really hurting for manpower. So it's not a huge deal for me right now. I've got 38,000 available, and I'm pouring stuff into uh, into into medicine now. So I get, you know, right now I'm getting 10% of everything I lose back. So that's 500 that get restored right away. And I've got a lot I can do in terms. You can see in my armory, I've got plenty of guns sitting around, and I can sell some of these back if I need to in order to make make some money if it comes to that. But as always, thanks for watching. If you hit that thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. And probably the next time you hear from me, I will be in Nevada. So have a great weekend, everybody.